Hello everyone. Welcome back to day 3 of ACCS 8. Hope you all had a relaxing break and have refreshed mind. Let's now move on with our valedictory session. I would like to call Dr. Narayanan Srinivasan from IIT Kanpur to deliver the valedictory address. He is the professor and head of the Department of Cognitive Science, Indian Institute of Technology, Kanpur. He is currently an associate editor of Frontiers in Neuroscience of Consciousness. He has been the Secretary General and he is currently the President Elect of National Academy of Psychology, India, and is also a founder member of Association for Cognitive Science. Hi, Mahima. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah. We do. We do, Professor Ayer. Thank you okay. so much. Okay. So now uh, we are at the end of the three-day conference. So. obviously i'm not going to give a very long talk <laughs> uh so first uh, let me thank uh, dr sham divakar and all his colleagues for organizing a wonderful conference uh if we were in person we would clap loudly but you can clap yourself and i guess hopefully sham will hear them in some virtual mode uh so thanks a lot sham and uh, really uh, Uh, you know uh, i know a lot of hard work has gone in and thanks to all the students and colleagues and administration who have put in a lot of work uh, i just thank personally as well as on behalf of association for cognitive science and uh, cognitive science colleagues throughout india okay so uh, Well, one of the, I mean, first, this is really for students who may not be familiar with it. This is the eighth conference. So we started the association roughly nine years ago, uh, with the aim that we want to bring people who do cognitive science research, typically scattered in different departments uh, in the country, in different universities, and so on. so that we have a forum and then we can uh, you know meet and discuss uh, about work that we do uh, and in the process we both build the discipline and also uh, you know build the discipline do good cognitive science research and of course training as well and so far so good we have had eight conferences and we hope that we will be able to continue this uh, with all of your support um in addition to the conference some of you may know that we have um you know uh, also been working towards building uh, departments in the country um 20 years ago we didn't have a single cognitive science department in india but now we have a, a handful of cognitive science programs or departments in the country at different places IIT Kanpur, uh, University of Allahabad, IIT Gandhi Nagar, IIT Delhi, um, University of Hyderabad, and so on. Okay, uh, so we do have um, a fair amount of programs now. So some of you are uh, maybe I don't know at what levels you are in. Hopefully, undergraduates can join master's programs in cognitive science in some of these uh, institutions. Or join for PhD programs here or elsewhere. Uh, we hope that we can grow further uh, in the next few years, um, and then make this whole enterprise, uh, you know, uh, exciting. I mean, uh, I find studying the mind very fascinating. Uh, obviously, um, I hope all of you as well. I mean, you have listened to various talks for three days, and you probably, I hope. Have some idea of what cognitive science is about. It's also quite possible you are pretty confused to what exactly is cognitive science, depending on all kinds of talks that you have listened to. Uh, you know, encompassing different methodologies, different approaches, different disciplines. Uh, cognitive science itself started in the 1950s as a kind of an interdisciplinary enterprise from the beginning. uh which assumed that people from different disciplines will come together enrich each other and then study and understand the mind hope we can do that and that's a challenge really interdisciplinarity is a nice word to use uh but it's really is a challenge 
when it comes to, for example, one's own individual work to be really interdisciplinary. Some of us know certain things better than others. Um, I mean, uh, there is anthropology, there is linguistics, there is philosophy, psychology, neuroscience, computer science, and if you go further, economics and so on. Wherever there are humans and human mind is involved, uh, pretty much it has something to do with cognitive science. So the real challenge is how to kind of use these different methodologies, approaches, ultimately to come to a fairly coherent understanding of uh, human mind and cognition and consciousness and so on. Uh, there are lots of fundamental problems that need to be solved in cognitive science, so which is a good thing as it was mentioned in earlier fireside chat as well. Uh, you all have jobs then. Uh, so it's very important. But at the same time, uh, people do fall into that trap of sometimes studying problems that are convenient rather than some problems that are really important. Uh, to study important problems, you need to put in a lot of effort and time. It's challenging. Um, and I hope that you people will be able to do that. Uh, there are fundamental issues. Some of them you are aware of. What is consciousness, for example? We have different kinds of proposals or ideas out there. We really do not have very good theories uh, of consciousness. And even when we have some theory of consciousness, just to give an example, we really do not know how to kind of evaluate one versus the other, and then actually come to a particular conclusion. And one of the problems that you may have seen, even in this conference, is that are we arriving at some place? Uh, where we kind of say that, well, this is where we are based on all the research we have done. Different people come, they present their small experiment or small theory or a small model, and then they present very rarely, and uh, I hope you may have realized that people actually link it to anybody else. Result, nobody is wrong, everybody is right. Uh, and science cannot run this way as well, that I hope that we can uh, come to the point where we can start maybe uh, throwing certain things out and then arrive at some meaningful destination. Maybe not immediately, but at least as a goal, I do, I do think we need to keep it. Um, there are lots of problems that we need to solve. Uh, cognitive science uh, as a human science uh, tend to get pulled in two different directions generally, let me simplify it. One is towards the inside. So some people want to study the brain, some people want to study the neurons, somebody wants to study some channel in some neuron, and somebody wants to study genetics, somebody wants to study the gut, uh, and any number of things, and maybe somebody wants to study the quarks and then try to explain how the mind works. So one can keep going inside smaller and smaller as technology is it, And it's not quite clear what is the appropriate level uh, to understand a particular phenomenon, perception, memory, language, and so on. Similarly, we live in a society, we live in a culture, so we get pulled towards outside. As a human science, uh, then we, people start worrying about how we interact with other people, how culture influences our mind uh, and so on. So the question then is exactly what is the appropriate level of explanation for a particular phenomena that we are interested in. It's also not clear how do we draw the boundaries uh, given that a lot of things that we study are, some have said before as well, is context dependent. Context dependency is not a problem per se, um, but what exactly is the right context that we need to study or understand is also not clear. So how do we draw these boundaries? How do we identify what are the appropriate contextual factors to understand a particular mental phenomenon that is of interest to us? And that's also not quite clear. And I hope some of you will focus your attention on that. 
Um, the other aspect which it is really needed and we kind of, you know, it was nice there were two keynotes that had some focus on it. Uh, our Mr. Cognitive science cannot just be a basic research discipline. Ultimately, if cognitive science works, if you are able to come up with some good theories and good explanation, we should be able to put it into practice that we should actually be able to develop meaningful applications uh, it could be in the clinical domain where there are lots of disorders. It could be in other domains. Education was one example that we saw to some extent uh, or to other aspects as well. Um, we have done very little research, definitely not rigorous research in terms of, for example, say cognitive science in education. One of the things some of you may have noticed with COVID is that now we see routinely see uh, that there are apps to learn anything and everything. Presumably, uh, we can teach coding for two-month-old infants now, uh, and so on. So the question then is, uh, exactly how do these things work? Uh, or do they work at all? How do we learn? Uh, and we do not know really. Um, uh, so education industry, especially learning industry, is completely unregulated right now. People make all kinds of claims. As cognitive scientists, we have a responsibility to say, well, this works, this doesn't work. What exactly are we doing? And this is our responsibility ultimately also to work on applications, domains in which where we are going to prescribe now things to learn, things to do. And hopefully the association, and of course, everybody involved, faculty members and students here uh, would do that. The other problem cognitive science faces, and I'm sorry, I'm really talking about problems here, uh, is that uh, we are at this point in time predominantly satisfied with what we would call small data science. By small data science, we bring people to the lab, uh, we do some experiment usually with some 20 subjects or 30 subjects, and we just want to generalize it happily to some. 8 billion people on the planet. Uh, but are we, is that sufficient? At some point in time, we have replicability crisis, we have generalization problems. So to do that, we need to take our science to the field. Maybe we should go to the field and then collect data from 2000 people. And that's probably, uh, one good thing with technology, maybe with mobile phones, tablets, laptops, maybe we should be able to go out in the field, collect data, you know, to do cognitive science in the wild. Uh, and perhaps some of you will start doing that as well, or at least I hope, because that's when we, I think what comes out of it will really be useful and also applicable and probably will enable us to come up with better theories as well. So um, I will end here. Uh, once again, uh, let me thank Shyam for giving me an opportunity to address all of you and uh, look forward to meeting all of you again, hopefully in person in the next ACC. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for your great work. And thank you so much for sharing such a wonderful session for us in the morning. Now I'd like to call Mr. Danush Kumar to announce the winners of the Brain Art Competition. Thank you, Mahima. This is a truly anticipating moment for me. Good evening, everyone. To facilitate the recognition of studies about the brain and mind, in the sidelines of ACCS 8 conference, we launched our uh, first ever Brain Art Competition, asking people to talk their art rather than words. In this competition, we invited art expressions on the theme mind and brain in what one may call as a personal yet creative and inspiring interpretation. The competition had no age or gender or socio-religious boundaries and was held under three categories, pencil drawing, painting, and digital art. The call for submission was sent the evening of January 12, 22. Our expectation was just 20 submissions. Uh, we had announced that submissions closed January 20 at 10 p.m. The response was unexpected. We received 300 plus entries. Most entries came from schools, 
Uh, the youngest was five years and we even received three entries from an experienced medical doctor. Uh, these are some of the drawings from the first standard students. We were graced by two artists and a professor whose sense of art had inspired people for more than 20 years. Let me acknowledge the judging panel for the event, Sri Pachan Kottiyam, Sri Akhil P.S. and Dr. Ajit Madhavan for their dedication and selflessness in volunteering this difficult job of selecting the best. We also would like to thank Mr. Parag Amodkar for having reached out to us. Please upload with us we congrats, we congratulate the winners of the Brain Art event. In the digital painting, the first prize is secured by Priyanka, Priyanka Baumik. The second prize is secured by Ashananda, and third place by Amal. For the painting competition, the first place is secured by Monica Mittal. The second place is secured by Tejas Gauda. And the third prize goes to Maha Harikara Sudan. For the pencil drawing, the first prize goes to Parodi Verma, second prize to Purna, and third prize to Jitin Raj. Congratulations to all the winners. To us, all the submissions were unique and worthy, and we heartily thank all the participants parents and the well-wishers of younger participants from schools, teachers, and principals for their roles in making this event a grand success. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Mr. Dhanush. And congratulations to all the winners and all the participants of the Brain Art competition. Now I would like to invite our organizing chair of ACPS 8, Dr. Sham Devakar, for the closing remarks of the session. Thank you, Mahima. It was. Um... It, it was one of the one of the best experiences of 2022, I would say, because 2022 started off by having us review, sit with lots of people, asking them, what should I do? There was a lot of, a little bit of review, a little bit of deadlines. Let me um, share a screen so that way I can thank a few people who actually took part in um, making ACCS 8 work. My primary gratitude definitely ACCS, a large set of elements that happened with ACCS 8 was because of the experience and guidance from, let's say, the committee members who have been part of it. Two of them are here online with us. Professor Naran and Srinivasan, you were really a big help. You did help me out in minutes when we had very big difficulties. Uh, Professor Krishna Prasad Miyapuram, Krishna was such a great help to tell me what to do even in the early days. And of course, I can't ignore the conference chair's uh, direct involvement in this conference, which made it much more interesting. Professor Bapiraju, when you hear this, I'm very, very grateful to all three of you. And this is something that we started. At the inaugural, we uh, probably because of COVID and other scenarios and way we worked, Amrita had a mega event on January 12th, and we were all busy with that. So. When I did ask my uh, senior faculty members and colleagues, they all helped me through wherever, whatever means they could do. My gratitude to the inauguration, uh, people who participated in our inaugural address and inaugural ceremony. My first uh, salutations to our um, Sampujya Swami Amrita Suryupanda Puri, president of our board of trustees, Amrita Vishwadhyay Pidam. Uh, my gratitude to the vice chancellor, Professor Venkat Rangan, and the vice chancellor's office that had actually communicated things that I didn't even have to do at late in the evenings or early um, early mornings, for example. My special thanks also to Professor Manisha Ramesh. I wish we had her. She's such an enterprising individual. Um, she She's our provost and leads our strategic initiatives. She also leads our sustainability initiatives. I know she has a conference coming up in two days, so she, her team really helped me out in uh, picking out certain things. And then there were professors Bipin Nair, Brahmachari Devidas Chaitanya, who as a campus director also helped us. Dr. Bipin is, uh, was so accessible that a lot of things happened. So given that this, this group of people that I show on this slide helped us a lot making what you see happen the last three days of uh, events in different formats. My special gratitude to our Chancellor Amma, who actually called us and took took note and made sure a lot of things happened in her direct guidance. 
Um, beyond all this, there was a huge group of people that uh, who silently helped us, who passed on information, who attended events. We are very, very grateful to all our speakers, all our authors, nearly 52 or 60 reviewers that uh, who helped us with uh, serious reviews, even though the, they were only abstracts and that too very, very quickly. I know it was very hard for several people, some of them going through personal and other professional complications yet pay, came in, gave us a lot of time. We're very, very grateful to every single act of yours. Um, but I wouldn't, none of this would have been possible if, um, I mean, I forget to tell you also um, from School of Medicine, Dr. Anand Kumar on his inaugural day actually had to postpone his outpatient session to come and give us a lecture and talk. And he said he made it in a last minute uh, adjustment as well for me and for our sake. My special thanks to my other colleagues, Dr. Bindu Menon, the head of psychiatry, and uh, Dr. C.B. Gopinath, the professor at the Department of Neurology and the set of, uh, at, as part of our Amata Center for Neurosciences at our hospital campus. A lot of faculty members, staff and students from School of Biotechnology, especially um, uh, students who are not on campus, contributed to the cultural events, dancing, singing, cultural music. They went to different locations, they performed it, they video recorded it. I'm sure their family members were involved, friends were involved. They're so grateful even in this period when uh, so much restrictions are imposed because of the, the, uh, the infection. People took extra steps to be careful, to be kind and definitely gave us a very good experience. Uh, my students at uh, School of Engineering, our colleagues at School of Engineering, um, our vice chairman of EC department. There are lots of people who indirectly and directly got in and offered whatever that they could at that time. My special thanks to uh, Nitin, Viki, uh, and all the speakers here who, who could make it even though they, had go they were going through a lot of other um, uh, emergencies and situations and so on and so forth. Um, the, um, the Zoom account and enabling us to work was, uh, was not an easy process with two or three conferences happening parallelly. My gratitude to Brahmachari Sairam uh, and the entire ICTS team who has been working with us on computer issues, on Wi-Fi and coordinating accounts and so on. There was a general administration team at Amritapuri campus. The university has been helping me for every small requirement. And the only concern that they had is are you sure you can't do it on site? We could help you. Then we, of course, we understand it's a COVID period, but so they did pull out a lot of effort for as if they were expecting all of us here on site and on campus. I thank our accounts office, last minute emails, overnight emails, our Amrita office of communication for lots of uh, media support and uh, press pre-press release and uh, content management and so on, so on and so forth. But the most critical uh, part of uh, gratitude is this uh, small group of people not uh, who have been sitting with me, let's say uh, day and night last five, six days. Some of them not even going home, leaving their little children in somebody else's hands. And I personally would like to thank them, each of them, Hema Arati for having conducted the sessions, the emails to the chairs and everybody else. Mahima and Akil for doing the MC work. Um, you are absolutely genius uh, in doing it without, without a big notification you prepared and you came in. Mahima, special thanks for assembling that uh, video version of the tutorial, the cultural events. Sri Lakshmi on the right side who's sitting on the ground floor with a, with a red pullover. She's our, she was the one in charge along with the Dr. Asha Vijayan for making the proceedings that we just started circulating the 197 pages of abstracts and content. And uh, the artwork in that proceedings comes from these talented kids uh, who contributed from brain art, some of them being winners. My special gratitude to Sridev who did the media, the Facebook, the Instagram, the social media for me, and along with um, controlling the hosting part of the Zoom meeting with Sandeep and others. Anandu, uh, no words for what you did for me last minute. All my, some of my banners came from Anandu standing the way back. Chaitanya, a uh, lot of ping pong uh, communications assembling, who's talking to whom, keynotes and everything was done by Chaitanya. Sandeep, the same way you did the same thing for some of the keynotes and I was a big help. 
Abhijit, um, uh, no single words. You've been managing 300 su submissions. You also did your own poster presentation. He didn't sleep for two nights. That's the ba basic fact. He actually slept two hours during the morning session after his stuff. Nijin, uh, Nijin Nisar, uh, you did an amazing job. You and Asha being young parents uh, and Arati being young parents still let go of all that and stayed with me late, late night. And my special gratitude to Danish to having coordinated a lot of affairs with the accounts, running the brain art competition, the child. So there, uh, none of this conference would have happened without most of these people here. I was just lucky to be in, in bit, midst of this working group. So with that, I would say um, ACCS 8 was a very beautiful session for me and for lots of people involved here. We are very emotioned by the kind of support that all of you did. Many of you came on time. Whatever we could do, we facilitated. Whatever we couldn't do, we tried, but we do. please excuse us. We were not the best or best optimized in certain elements. But the, the most important thing that we missed out was to receive you here in person. There's backwaters 30 meters away and 150 meters beyond the backwaters is our Arabian Sea. And Kerala backwaters, as you know, is one of the nicest locations. And we are not a city. We are in our campus is in a village, fishing village near Kollam. And hopefully in the near future, we look forward to hosting you in person, uh, having much larger conversations, having collaborations and possibly much more fun. My special, special thanks to the keynote speakers um, who made time at 6.30 PM or 7.30 PM late evenings in US or in China, in Japan or in U UK or in Italy or in New Delhi or even here in uh, Amritapuri in midst of their busy, busy schedule, especially with COVID, I can understand majority of your time is in front of a computer. So I am very emotion. I'm very grateful. I'm act once again, let me thank my co-organizing committee members Professor Bapi Raju, Professor Narayanan, and Professor Krishna Prasad Miyapuram for having been a constant companion in this journey called ACCS8. Uh, we will host all the books and everything. Before I finish, let me tell you there's one more session, a general body meeting that's going to come up. We invite you as ACCS8 organizers to be part with us also for that meeting. With that, thank you, Mahima. Um, I'm going to... Uh, stop my talk and uh, giving back giving it back to you thank you so much